the 1.85 supersonic update introduced a completely new type of weapon – air-to-air heat-seeking missiles. In the previous video, we already broke down how the first homing heads worked. Now, let's get all practical and discuss all the things you need to know to use them effectively in battle. 1. Infrared seekers of early missiles only react to heat generated by hot gases from engines. As such, in most cases you can effectively lock onto a target only from the rear hemisphere. Modern, more advanced missiles like the ones equipped on some of our helicopters do not have this weakness. These missiles are all aspect, which means they can lock from both the frontal hemisphere and the sides of the target. Bear in mind that the bigger the heat emission, the easier it is for your missiles to track the target. There won't be any problems with powerful, very intense engines, like the Sabres, for instance. However, some old-timey biplane, not that you'll actually encounter anything like it, can be virtually invisible to your missiles. 2. Always mind the distance. In a perfect scenario, the lock-on distance of an early missile is roughly 4,000 meters, provided that your target is a jet with afterburners engaged which flies in a straight line, and you can calmly lock onto it from the rear hemisphere. In less ideal situations, the lock-on distance is somewhere around 2,500 meters. Again, keep in mind that these are the average numbers for early air-to-air -air missiles. More advanced missiles are capable of locking onto targets much more effectively and at longer distances. 3. Different missiles have different radii of acquisition just like in real life. While one missile can only be launched if you keep the target precisely in your crosshairs, the other one might be more forgiving. Don't forget to account for that if you decide to switch to a different model. 4. Before actually acquiring the target, the missile goes through what is called the preparatory period. You first warm up the electronics and start the gyroscopes. That's why there are two different key bindings. One for the start of the preparation, and the other for the launch itself. So, before diving in, head to Control's menu and tune them to your liking. Oh, and another important thing. Once you've activated the homing head, you only have a brief time window to launch the missile. If you're too slow, you'll need to warm it up again. This is a basic sequence of actions you'll go through using air-to-air -air missiles in a combat situation. Locate your target and hop on its tail. Now, press the lock on button and wait for it. The special indicator in the upper left corner will tell you when the target is acquired. The special marker appears. Try to hold the enemy's plane in that circle. Then, press the launch button, bid your missile farewell, and the enemy plane is no longer with us. OK, that's settled. You now know how to hit someone with an air-to-air -air missile. Now, let's talk about how you can evade them. First of all, always remember this. If there's a missile rapidly closing in on you, the game definitely will tell you, even if you're flying on a plane that historically didn't have any special systems with such capabilities. We implemented that feature to model the visual detection. At the same time, it's important to note that the timing of the alert depends entirely on the skill of your crew. Secondly, again, just like in real life, anti-missile maneuvers are nothing to sneeze at and will be your literal lifesaver. Luckily for us, early missiles were unable to properly track swiftly maneuvering targets. So, when you see the warning, change your course drastically. Take a sharp turn or dive out of the way. In most cases, a missile won't be able to mirror the maneuver in time and, consequently, will lose you. But then again, if someone uses a modern missile against you, you will have to work really hard to shake it off your tail. Fun fact. Early missiles have only a few seconds worth of fuel. When it runs out, the missile flies further out of pure inertia and, naturally, becomes much easier to dodge. On top of that, if a missile is launched from a great distance, you can align yourself with its trajectory and just outfly it. Dart away. Third, you can fool the missile. 
Helicopters, for instance, already possess special equipment allowing for some countermeasures, optoelectronic interference stations and heat flares. If, for whatever reason, your plane doesn't have access to this fancy tech, don't worry. You don't really need complex gadgets and IR decoys to fool an early missile. Any big source of heat will do, like the sun, for example. Another way to make yourself harder to hit is to hide your heat signature. Switch off your engine for a moment. That might be enough for the missile to lose track. Overall, the early air-to-air -air missiles are not easy to master. They're worth every bit of trouble, but you must have a plan B. Or be 100% sure that your missile will connect. A good situation to take advantage of is, for instance, when your target flies in a straight line at a maximum speed, which means that sharp evasive maneuvers can easily tear down the plane. At the same time, for helicopters, air-to-air -air missiles are a great tool to fight off annoying supersonic predators. Make a point to practice using it in the training mode. Experiment, try out new things, and this new armament will reveal its full potential to you.